This program is intended for mature audiences only. Altitude adjustment may contain language, images, or other content that some may find offensive. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Altitude Adjustment. Good afternoon, I'm Leon Davis, and you're listening to Altitude Adjustment, the week, the twice a week of podcast about people, politics, and professions. And I'm welcoming uh, my guest hosts, um, my co-hosts, pardon me, not guest hosts, co-hosts, Warren and Leonard. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, Leon, how you doing? All right. Hey, glad to be here today. Excellent. So today's topic is um, minority rules. And that was based on what has recently transpired in the um, Supreme Court. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but moreover, um, there has been a trend towards chipping away at the majority rules. Um, we have increasingly uh, seen rules put into place that are contrary to what majority, the majority supposedly thinks. And, and I say supposedly, so there was, if you, if we all remember back to the previous um, presidential election prior to the, the November, there were polls that were saying um, that Hillary Clinton had a big lead over her opponent. And when it all played out, that just wasn't the case. So there are a lot of polls that are saying that um, conservative ideas are in the minority instead of the majority. And yet we continue to get these rules that seem to be from the minority that are imposing themselves on the major majority. What do you think? Well, they, the conservatives have learned how to manipulate the system to get their way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they started this some years ago where they were playing with gerrymandering to take over the House of Representatives. But we got all these Democrats who sit there and want to be conservative, want to be centrist, and they they refuse to do anything about what the Republicans were doing. They were saying things like, oh, we can't, we can't meet wrong with wrong. We got to be right. And they're not worrying about being right. They're worrying about having power. Uh, they, the Republicans in the Senate stopped the filibuster under the previous administration to get all the conservative judges they want. And you just, and you saw the effect, you saw the effect of that was the, uh, the Texas abortion law put in. And the Republicans on the Supreme Court just chose to let it go, not even rule on it. Well, so 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 I kind of uh, kind of was approaching the idea that um, that the polls may not be necessarily correct as far as whether the country is conservative or um, progressive, and so I was kind of hoping to get your your take on. Um, do you think that that may be the case or, or, you know, are we missing something as far as um, what the majority of the people want? Well, majority of the people wanted a lot of the stuff that Joe Biden's doing because conservative and progressive people will benefit from it. Uh when you look at the polls, that's what the people say. But these Republicans ain't worrying about the polls. They want what they want. They want their power. So, Warren, what do you, I mean, have you, 
Do you have a, a take? I mean, because you and I, we we've talked, uh, you know, a lot about uh, polls and all that kind of stuff. Do you do you think that maybe the polls are just just dead wrong and really we are a conservative country? I think the polls are off. How much off is the question? Um, you know, like I told you, I, I, I didn't get polled. I haven't been polled in a long time and I'm a registered voter, but uh, that's part of the issue. Who gets polled, who doesn't? The other issue I see uh, as far as where the country is, is basically when it comes down to uh, the popular vote, We've got the electoral college for the presidential election. So the, the popular vote is pretty much nullified. So that that's a big issue right there. Even if the majority of the country wants a certain thing with the electoral college, that could easily be over overrun, you know, mm -hmm. and polls, like I said, some people will tell you how they feel. Some people won't, and some people will lie. So that's so much for the polls. And that's and that's one of the things that I was hoping we we talk about okay. is that we have these polls that say that the country oh. is progressive. So if you look at the polls, the polls say the country is progressive and that we want to help each other. We want to do the right thing. Um, but then you look at the way people voted and you see all of this red across the country. Mm -hmm. So something to me is not adding up. It's not jiving in that, in that discussion. I agree hundred percent. I don't think these pollsters are going deep enough into the woods where all of these conservatives and anti-abortionists are. They're just missing them, not counting them. They're out there. Well, like, like I said, for me, there's a lot of, a lot of the so-called progressive ideas are, res are resonating with everybody because when jobs were leaving, you know, a few years back, about 10 years back, a lot of people were leaving the sticks and coming into the urban areas because the jobs were still in the urban areas. And whether you're conservative or not, people need income. They need they need to work. They need to feed themselves. They need to take care of their bills. Uh, so one of but, the things that you said is you called them so-called progressive ideas. So-called progressive ideas. Why do you say, why do you call them so-called progressive ideas? Well... I, I, I got to saying so-called ideas, for example, there is this thing about conservative, uh, about when you're tough on crime, that's a conservative idea. No, I don't know many progressives that want crime left unfettered in their area. They can't, they can't get in and out their homes. They can't drive around their neighborhoods because criminals are taking over. Well, okay, uh, so so let me go back. You said so-called progressive ideas. Okay. So, so so that to me implies that you don't think that all of the ideas that progressive are putting forward are progressive ideas. Well, it, it as I as I just stated, it, it it goes both ways. See, everybody needs work. Everybody needs income. Everybody can't be an entrepreneur. Everybody can't live off the land. Everybody can't live off the grid. So whether we live in the sticks, whether we live out in the boonies, or whether we live in the over in overcrowded cities, we all need to work. We all need to get some income. We all need to pay bills, electric, gas, food. Uh, we drive cars because America is a car society. So we got to pay repair bills. We got to pay, man, every state now has mandatory insurance, whether you're a red state, whether you're a blue state. So we got to pay for insurance now. Uh, so why is it so-called progressive ideas? I, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm trying I, to understand. Okay. It, it, 
the, the image that I got when you said that was oh. that that progressive ideas aren't true progressive ideas. Well, that there's a, a messaging something. problem with progressive ideas. The reason why I put that so-called in there, because again, we got to get jobs up. We got to get job numbers up. We got to pay, like the put a perfect example, the push to get a fifteen dollar minimum wage. Uh, West Virginia is a red state. When uh, what's that senator from West Virginia's name? Uh, Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin voted against that, and some other progress and some other. Yeah, but Joe Manchin's not a progressive. He's never been a progressive. Okay, uh, that was a mistake on my part. He's a conservative. Joe Manchin should be in the Republican Party, as far as I'm concerned. But he's he went he voted against that. Right. Kristen Sinema voted against that. That's that famous thing where she went up there to give her vote, and she turned her thumb down. I understand. Okay. Okay, I, I guess I'm not. So you use the term "so-called progressive ideas." Okay. I'm not I'm, understanding I'm, 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 I'm why you would this, why you would call them so-called progressive ideas. Okay, I'm using this specific idea to go so-called. That was supposed to be a progressive idea, a minimum wage going up. It is a progressive it idea. Was, it's championed okay. by all the by all the progressives. Okay, now. Joe Manchin and Chris Sinema, who's supposed to be Democrats, but Democratic they're not. Party they're not support. progressives. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm done with that. You're not gonna let me explain it. <laughs> uh, you you keep using centrist Democrats to define progressive ideas. Okay. You don't see a difference between centrist Democrat and progressive Democrat. Okay. Now, now, okay. The the thing I'm explaining is, in this country, we the Republicans were considered. The, uh, the considered the conservative party democrats were considered uh progressive but now what we got is we got a bunch of people who should really be in the republican party they they then come into the democratic party and they're stopping, okay. here's, they're stopping here's what I, here's what i think I, I think you i think you're pushing centrist democrats and progressive democrats into the same category not all Democrats are progressive Democrats. And that's that's what I'm saying. So therefore, you got people voting for Democrats, looking for certain things, and they're not getting them because these conservatives and some of these centrists are occupying the Democratic, the Democratic spot, and they're really Republicans in heart. They're called, they're, 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 they call them Dinos. Okay. Just like on the other side, they call them Rhinos. But... When you get those people on the other side that are not hard conservatives, the Republican Party gets rid of them. They get them out of office. Okay, so, uh, so what's what I what I, I guess what I'm trying to understand and, and see if maybe you know you guys have some ideas. I, I look at um, what we claim um, the country is that that the country is progressive, that progressive ideas. Um, are well accepted and received. And yet what we see is time after time after time is that progressive ideas get pushed to the side and aren't enacted. So um, you were, um, Warren, you were a, a big Bernie fan. At um, one time. Is that is that fair to say at one time? Sure. Okay, I can put that out there and you won't, you won't feel that I'm mischaracterizing you. Past tense. Okay, so you're not a, so you're not, are you not a, okay. So, so Bernie had, a, had several ideas that were considered popular. Mm -hmm. None of his ideas, none, not a one has been enacted or has even reached a stage where it has even been voted on. And yet time after time, you get these polls that say people love progressive ideas. I think progressive people love the ideas more than the so-called progressive party, which is the problem. Bernie was doing well up until it, it appeared he was becoming a threat to the established Democrats. I think what they did to Bernie was nothing other than a coup. They got together, 
and got him out of there. It was organized. It was, you know, and I mean, they did what they could do and you can't blame them for doing what they wanted to do, but that's party politics. I get that. Okay. But, but, okay. So, all right. I understand change is hard. It's difficult. A lot of people are going to push back against change because they're going to either lose their position. They're going to, you know, not, uh, they're going to get passed up uh, for, you know, positions of power because they're not a part of the change. Um, and, and I'm going to take Joe Manchin and uh, Christian Cinema for um, an example. So as Leonard says, you know, they're, they claim to be Democrats and yet they, they won't vote against the um, filibuster law and the filibuster law. And nobody can argue that the filibuster law has not been used by the minority to stop the majority from implementing policies that are popular on a majority scale. Right? So, so we've got people who are, um, who are in offices that believe, supposedly believe in democracy. Democracy is majority rule. That's, it's flat out, plain and simple. There is no other description of democracy. Democracy is democratic elections by the majority to implement policies, procedures, and people in offices. Of, po of, of political power. And we have people on both sides of the issue on both. I, I hate using that term, but that's how we have to discuss it because we have a two party system and they actively, um, as you just so adeptly pointed out, actively work to keep it a two party system. Sure. So we've got people on both sides of the system actively fighting against democracy. How are we ever going to get to democracy? You're that not. Great question. <laughs> We're not. Because we have people that want power over everything else. Democracy requires the idea that, okay, I'm not going to get power. I'm, I'm going to have it, but I'm, I'm, I'm only going to have it for a while. So when it's so when the people have shown with election that they don't want my ideas, then I need to step aside. Now, what we saw in the last election, we're not going to have that. We had a, a person that was willing to get a coup to kill people and what have you so he can keep power. The number one thing about him was power. And this was the person that had the job of the chief executive of the country, and he was too lazy to do the job. He didn't he don't want to do the job. He just wants the position to do what he wants to do. And so I don't think I think now you're gonna have you're gonna have democracy gone. I, I think it's gone. Because, you know, like one of the questions you kept asking, they say they like democratic ideas or or uh, progressive ideas, but they won't elect progressives to put in the ideas. And they won't and they won't vote for any progressive policies. And they and they. Well, I think when you talk about the federal level, you're talking about putting the people in that will that will vote for the progressive policies. OK, like uh, if you, you knew in Kentucky, if you wanted progressive policies, you can't send Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul back to D.C., but you did it anyway. You did it anyway. And one progressive policies that 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 they show that Kentuckians love and now if you try to take it, they'll fight you is 
the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act. You try to take that away from them now, they'll fight you tooth and nail. But yet, you keep sending McConnell and Rand Paul back to D.C. You're never going to get progressive policies by sending those people back to D.C., especially when uh, McConnell said, I'm here, and he's the self-proclaimed Grim Reaper to keep progressive policies from happening. And so part of what you're saying, I think, addresses the issue that I started with. Once progressive policies are in place, people love them. Mm -hmm. Social Security, mm -hmm. aid to dependent children, mm -hmm. Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. They love those, but they will not let you try to implement so so all of these policies have been beneficial to to Americans across the country. Mm -hmm. Fire departments, mm -hmm. police, mm -hmm. all of that is quote unquote progressive mm -hmm. legislation. And so and so yeah, the polls say people love this stuff. They want progressive ideas. They want um, you know, what comes along with progression. But then when it comes to comes to voting, when it comes to removing obstructions to implementing those things that people really want and love, there seems to be some kind of blockage. There seems to be out of nowhere. So seven of the last seven of the last eight elections I'm sorry. In 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 what was it seven? Two times in the last eight elections, two times in the last eight elections, the candidate that did not ha win the popular vote got into the presidency. And that was Ronald Reagan. That was the last time that happened. Reagan won the popular vote, and he won the electoral college. But since then, no Republican has won the popular vote. George no Republican. Bush. Only one time. Only one time. Did that? That's the the number. Only one time in the last eight elections did a Republican candidate win the popular vote. And that was Ronald Reagan. No, that was George Bush's second term. He won the popular vote the second he time. Won, the he won the popular vote in 2004. He lost the popular vote in 2000. Right. That was against... Um, um, uh, uh, Gore. Gore. Al, Gore. Al Gore. He lost that election. He lost the popular vote, but won the presidency. In 2004, he won the popular vote for re-election. That was the last... Out of the last eight presidential elections, that was the only time a Republican has won the popular vote and became president. The other two times that Republicans became president, they they lost the popular vote. And this is based on the Electoral College. Right. When well, the, the, pop the popular vote. So the, the so we know that the popular vote and the the electoral college vote is does not always align. Align, and correct. that was by design. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the popular candidate um lost the election in two instances. In both instances, was a Republican. They lost to there was a the, the Democratic candidate won the popular vote, but was not given the presidency because of the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. So looking at all this, do you think the Electoral College is in itself democratic? I'm going I'm to I'm let you start on that, Leonard. Or do you want to try that first or you want me? Because. Because did you want did you want to try it first? Your hand at it first. 
So the question I, is, so the question is, is the Electoral College a democratic institution? It is not a purely democratic institution. But now, when you say purely, in, why do you why do you preface it with okay, purely? Let me let me go let me go let me go where I'm going. It was put in so that the more popular states would not just overrun the smaller states. It was put in to give small states an equal voice in choosing the president. That's what that's what it it, it was doing. Okay, uh, I believe if we're a democracy, okay, if you're a small state, you're a small state. You get your votes, and so you. And here's you move here's along. the thing, and here, here's why I say that because because words matter. Yeah, you say it's not purely a democratic institution, right? So that means that there's that on some level you believe it's a democratic institution or what I'll what I'll do is I'll say it this way and when they were forming this democracy they put in that electoral college to give the smaller states to try to equalize the smaller states and having an equal say in who's going to be president but that's when that's you, against that's anti democratic though isn't it I would it, say I, I, that's why I don't say that's why that's why I said what I said. I'm not in favor of the electoral college. I believe our president should be elected strictly by popular vote as we elect senators in the state. And as we at one time we elected representatives. But this gerrymandering by parties mm -hmm. is, is, is killing that. So, okay. so let me, let me take my hand at this, uh, okay. um, at this, um, um, electoral college, electoral college. Uh, so that it's unequivocal so that I'm not prefacing it, that I'm not in any way saying that it is a, an institution of the dem of democracy. Democracy is about majority rules. In our democracy, one person, one vote, and the majority then gets to implement whatever policies that, um, that were voted by, as a majority uh, in that society. Under no circumstance, in no form, shape, is the electoral college a true democratic institution it is a bastardization of one person one vote for whatever reason it was implemented and i understand why so there's this concept of, and you hear it all the time of the tyranny of the majority over the minority in a democratic society there is no such thing as a tyranny of the majority over the minority. It is simply majority rules. The idea is, is that some people want to say because the majority always gets its way that they're, you know, they're, they're suppressing or they're, um, tyranny, uh, terrorizing the minority. It is impossible for that to happen because majority rule does not, um, it does not define conservatism or any type of particular ideology that, that has to, um, meet the qualifications of majority. So if conservatives are in the majority, whatever conservatives put forward, they get to rule. Majority rule simply means that it means majority rule. You can't, um, tier, tier, can't perform tyranny on any group because if you're in the minority, you're in the minority and, and you sub, and you don't get your way. That's just what majority rules means. That's what democracy means. Everybody gets a vote. And if you, your vote isn't for the policy that gets the most votes, you just don't get what you want. 
So, so the question that you're asking is, you know, what do I think of uh, the, the Electoral College? The Electoral College is a bastardization of democracy. It is anti-democracy. It does not belong anywhere near a democracy for any reason. Yeah. Um, one question, though, thing that's been going through my mind. Let's take a particular issue that might go up on the ballot, on the national ballot. Say this particular issue was a very divisive, not only divisive, but a very heinous issue. Uh, let's, let's think of a good one. How about slavery? Say it was on the ballot. Should slavery be legal or not? What if the majority said, yes, we should have slavery? Does that mean democracy won? Okay, so you're posing. I'm, did you want to try your first handed, your handed at first, Leonard, or you want to let me go for it? Huh? I said, go ahead, Leon. All right. You sure? Yeah. All right. So, so what you're, what you're doing in that, in that scenario is you're conflating, um, morality with politics. So, it is not, we should not, we, we, we all agree that uh, slavery is wrong. And if the, if the majority of people in this country decide you to have slavery, problem? they've won that vote and, and then they, they're willing to accept the consequences of what happens when you do stuff like that. I think morally it's, it's reprehensible that anybody would put that on the ballot and try to uh, implement that as a society, just as but what we had in the society. I'm sorry, but isn't that what we had in the society at one time? I, I got that. I, actually, but, but, so your, your original question was, "What do we do about that?" Okay, and you're right. The what happens in so let's say, so let's say we did vote as a society, the majority rules to have slavery. Okay. Okay. Then the question becomes what to do about it. Then we implement slavery because that's been, that's what the majority rules. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now you have a choice. You continue to fight against it. You continue to do what you can to re to rid slavery as the scourge in your society. But as, as a majority, how do you pretend to deal with it if the majority of people vote to have slavery? How do you deal with it? Because the majority and, has, uh, has spoken. It was a little more towards <laughs> the idea of would you label said society a democracy under those circumstances well the de democracy part of it is um that everybody voted and the majority ruled okay and so that was done and then and then then the second part of your premise is they ruled on something that was heinous correct okay <clears throat> does that does the fact that they voted on something heinous change the fact that it was a democracy Does it? Well, of course not. Okay. It, it does. Democracy okay. does not depend on you doing the moral right thing. Gotcha. Democracy depends on one person, one vote, representation, et cetera, et cetera. The group, the group decides for the group how the group is going to, to perform and act. And that occurred when you had the vote. It would be different if five people decided that America was going to be a slave country. 
That's something completely different because then democracy has not been served. Quite true. I agree. So I agree now, you. huh? No, I was saying I, was, I agree with you. So then the other part of it is, so you brought forth this, this, um, this idea that democracy doesn't also, doesn't necessarily mean that, <clears throat> <clears throat> Pardon me. That the, the not, democracy does not necessarily mean that you have people of goodwill and good intent, and that also or, is correct. Yeah, right. Or that's automatically an ideal society. I think I, I'm thinking you mean ideal differently than I'm thinking you mean ideal. Okay, well, that that's that's could be a very sub subjective term. Well, so so ideal is if I have a say in the governing of my country. Just because I don't agree with what the eventual result is, mm -hmm. did I not have the ideal society? Well, you could easily say no. Well, I'm I'm asking. Okay, let me let me pose that to you as as the question that you had. If you get a say mm -hmm. in how your government functions, right. is that ideal? Well, you got to say if, if that's your if that's your thing of ideal. Ideal, like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. Uh, you get your say in how your government functions when you go to the ballot box now and vote. Now we have a group of people who want to take away uh, the right to vote from certain people. They want to make it so difficult for you to vote that you but you just say, "I don't want to vote. I'm not okay. going to vote." Okay, I, I get it. So you you kind of you kind of wandered off into the offshoots of that. All right. Because the, the so you're saying ideal is the eye of the holder. Yeah. And so I asked you, is a democratic government ideal? It depends on is to you. Is I is the democrat the democratic government ideal? A fully democratic government would not be perfect. Because like you... Is like it Warren ideal? Post, okay, like Warren Post, what if... It's a it's a yes or no question. I'm telling you why. I, I said it would not be 100% okay, perfect. Okay, so, I, I, so, and it, I, and so I, a and democratic society is not ideal to you. No it is not ideal to you. A, a fully democratic government wasn't ideal, and there's a reason why I say it. Now, is it... Does it matter the reason why I say it wouldn't be ideal to me or? Well, I'm, I I'm trying to first establish that you don't think a democratic government is ideal. I don't think a fully democratic government is ideal for okay. the reason. Using the reason with the situation that Warren just gave. And you have some people that. Okay, so that what, what kind of government would be ideal? I think somewhat of what we got in that there's there's a morality that comes into it that so how that do you implement I, I wouldn't want i wouldn't want to see slavery back in america because i understand that but how would you implement of people that? voted for it how would you implement that what government what government so so there are several forms of a government right if you get a chance to vote for something yeah if you get a chance to vote for something and you don't like it, does that make the government, the form of government, not ideal? No, that doesn't make it not ideal. So what is the form of government that you believe should be ideal? I believe... Because we don't have a full democracy. We never did. We had a democratic republic. 
that there was some democratic ideas. Into okay, so you're, you're, was, you're, you're, you're still not defining what is ideal. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you to stay focused on what is ideal. To me, what was ideal was a democratic republic that has, that has what I would consider morality based at, at its center. So in other words, for example, I wouldn't want to see us make slavery legal again. I, I get that, other... but okay. But, but if you, so if that... you, I'm just talking about the. Okay, so you got the form of government where everybody votes. Right. You got a form of government right. where kings and queens run it. You got a form of government where aristocrats run it. You got a form of government where landowners run it. Yeah. Okay. There's no morality clause in that. None of it. I said the okay. form of governance. Okay. Yes. Now, we want morality as a part of our governing, but yeah. is that a governing state? Is that a, a form of government? Morality. Morality is a driving force behind the government. It right. is not the government in and of itself. Right. Right. So, so I ask you, what, what is ideal? If okay. I get a chance to participate in my own governance, to me, that is ideal. I bring the morality to my government. Now, you say it was ideal. I, I asked ideal you the ideal be, form of government. Having a morality component in it is ideal for me. How do you how do you how do you add a morality component to a government? For example, I don't like 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 using the example that Warren just gave. Mm -hmm. I don't for me. That type of vote would not be an ideal use of government, but that's, and I'll admit that's. But my, that's the morality of the people. That's the morality of the people. The morality of the people is if I'm a moral person, I would never vote for, if, I would never vote for uh, um, slavery. Okay. But if I've got a society full of people that are willing to vote, it is not the government that's the problem. It is the morality of the people that's the problem. Right. Okay, Correct? now wasn't, wasn't that part morality? I'm sorry, what? On people. Huh? Wasn't that? And that's the problem. It's dependent upon people. It'll never be ideal, in my opinion. As and long and as so I, I, I'm saying that, okay, I understand what you're saying. Okay. You can't separate, you can't seem to separate a person's motivation from the form of government. Yes, anything can be corrupted by people. Mm -hmm. So the form of government, so the form of government is, is dependent on the people that are in the, in, in the, in the, that make up the, the elect, the population mm -hmm. as to whether or not the government is going to be moral. Okay, but the, the but the government itself does, is not immoral. It's just a it's just a mechanism to manage a uh, governing of a group of people. Now, isn't that is okay. it? I it doesn't that. it have some more basis? Why you moved away from a monarchy? Why you moved away from a feudal system where the aristocrats ran it? Why you moved away from and we fought? All these years, not to have a dictatorship where the previous guy tried to take us back to. Is it? Is it? Isn't that all? Isn't that all? Why that had a moral component? Because people thought that was immoral. People thought. I mean, that was part. That was part of the reason why you don't have that. Okay, so let's say, just for the sake of argument, let's say. Um, we had a monarchy mm -hmm. and the monarchy was the final decision on everything. Mm -hmm. And the monarchy said, 
I would like everybody to send me their, their concepts and ideas, and then we'll pick the best ones and we'll implement those. Mm -hmm. And so a majority of people send in an idea and the monarchy implements it. Mm -hmm. Is that a, is that a good form of government? It can, yeah. again. Huh? Can you repeat that question again? The monarchy, there's a monarchy. Mm -hmm. The monarchy makes all of the decisions about government and the form of mm -hmm. governance. Okay. The monarchy in implements a policy of asking all of the people in the land what they wanted to uh, achieve. And then based on the information that they got, they implemented the most popular ideas. Is that a good form of government? So would this be done on a individual person uh, basis or would it be done through uh, representatives? Does it matter? Probably. Okay. So why would it matter? What what would matter about it? Because as a person, my representative might not be the person that I voted for. So I would have a broken connection right there. Whereas if it was my direct vote, I could say at least my direct vote went into the mix. But that's how representative situations work. I understand that. Okay. So I guess the point I'm trying to get at is you have a say in, in, your, in how the government works. And so I'm asking you, is that a good way or not? And you guys can't seem to answer that. So I don't know where to go from there. I've liked representative form of government. You have a chance to have direct input into what you want. Well, I, actually, I a, a representative government is not direct input. It's secondary. I said input. you have a chance to have direct input. Like, it could come out like Warren said, the representative that's chosen to represent my area, my district, may not be the person that I voted for. Right. Now, does that so that's not that's not a direct input. That's indirect input. Right. I, okay. Listen to what I said. You have a chance. You have a chance. That doesn't mean you're going to get it, but you have a chance. How, what? How? How do you get a chance? How is that a chance? If the person that's chosen to represent the area I live in, if that's the person I voted for, that means I agree with a lot of his his or her political leanings and what they do. And that was my chance to get direct input. Uh, that was my chance to get direct input into what I did. So if that person came around and did, like you say, the monarchy, did, okay, what, and ask you what you, as for output, as for input from the people they represent. And for this particular area, let's say a ward of the city, that we got bad streets and roads. And so they put into their input into the budget to get money to fix street and roads. You gave me, and if that was my issue, you gave me a chance to have direct input into that. But everybody had everybody had a chance to to put into that. Whether right. you had, whether whether you went directly to, whether you went directly to the monarch or whether you went through a representative, you had an opportunity to input. Right. Whether you voted for your representative or not, if you sent your information to your representative, yeah, you you had an opportunity for input. Right. And so, if you didn't get what you wanted, that doesn't change the government. That doesn't change the situation. You just Correct. didn't get, you just didn't come out on top to be one of the people that voted for the most popular idea. Right. 
Now, so I'm asking about the is... form of government. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to get to is what form of government is ideal. If you're not the person that gets to put, that gets to to run the policy, you're not going to get ideal because you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Like when but I isn't that ideal? Is that you win some and lose some? If that if again that idea, what's going to be considered ideal is going to differ by the person you ask. But For ideal example, ideal has to has to be you win some and lose some because you you can't always be right. Correct. Well, I agree with that, Le uh, Leon. I definitely correct. agree. So if you can't always be right, then ideal is you win some and you lose some. Right. See, like when I when I, when when I'm voting yeah, when I'm sure. about to vote for a candidate, whether it's president, whether it's senator, representative, governor, an alder person, or a member of a city council, nobody's going to agree with me on a hundred percent of what I do. But I'm going to look at compared to their opponent or opponents who agree with me most. Uh, when I went to when I went to vote for Barack Obama that first time, I had to compare him with John McCain. Barack, uh, Barack Obama agreed with me more, a lot more than what I agree with John McCain on. I respected John McCain, but politically, we didn't see eye to eye on a whole lot of things. So my vote was for Barack Obama, and I didn't vote for But him. that doesn't change whether it's ideal or not because you didn't agree with John McCain. You it, got a chance. It did. You got a chance to express your opinion. So ideal is actually just an opportunity to express your opinion, isn't it? <clears throat> isn't that what ideal is? It depends on the person's definition of ideal. For me, that was good. Okay, me, so so ideal, that. ideal is having an opportunity to have input into your government. For some people, yes. I mean, See, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why you're fudging on this. I, I really I'm don't. Not fudging. I'm not fudging. I'm giving you my answer. An answer. Sure who are who is those some people? Who is those some people that that is okay for, and who and some people that's not? Okay, I'm. I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Okay. Right now, you got people, a group of people mm -hmm. that are trying to make power. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to gerrymander everything so that they can. Okay, so it's not ideal for them? Is what you're saying? They're, okay, now let me finish. They're gerrymandering the political process to guarantee that their ideas will win every election. What does that have they're, to do with ideal? What we got right now is not ideal for them. Ideal for them is. They How do you know will. it's not ideal? Because they're getting their way. If they're getting their way, it's ideal. It's not ideal for them. That's why they're. That's why they're doing. See, ideal for them is not that we. I win this election and I don't win this one. They want to win every election. They you want to win every win. election, huh? You want to win every election. I would like to, but I know that exactly, and that's what they would like. And they are doing the things they are, and you're just not. Isn't that ideal? Sure they are doing things to make sure that they win every election. Right? They're not. They're not. They're not putting their ideas up. They're not putting their ideas up to say, okay, if more people like our ideas and like our things better, then we'll win. They want to say we want our ideas to govern. Whether you you want to do the same, agree with them or not, you want to do the same. You you want <clears throat> no, to take I away. I don't want to. You want to take away all of the tools. You want to take away all of the tools that they're using to get their way, because you don't like the idea that they're 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 winning things that you don't like them to win. They're they're circumventing what our democratic process was all about. I agree. So they can. So they can be in power all the time. I agree. And one of the ways they're doing it is by this gerrymandering. And I don't understand why you don't think that that's ideal for them. Why do I you believe that that's not ideal? I said that. See, what we have now is not ideal for them. 
So they're going through gerrymandering as one example to make sure that they always win. But there's a process for doing all of that, right? And they're using the process, which is exactly what you do. You do you use the process to your benefit, right? They don't like the process that they're so they I don't know if, I don't know I don't know if that means right or not. I'm just saying okay, I'm just answering your I was just answering your original question. What was ideal? For them, the way we got it now, I, I'm not going on right or wrong. It's not ideal for them. I don't know so how you can say that when they're happy doing what they do. Okay, the the process that we got now, Donald Trump did not like the process that we had. So he said he tried to change it. People, but he but don't you bunch of people, but, but don't you try to change it? DC. But don't he you try to change the situation? People, he sent a bunch of people to DC. Do you try to, try to change to the situation? And to try to disrupt our conversation. You're trying to eliminate the filibuster, aren't you? I'm not this ain't got nothing to do with the filibuster. Sure it does. You're trying to you're trying to change the system to meet your needs, aren't you? This ain't got nothing to do with the filibuster. Are you doing that? Okay. Are you doing that? I'm Are you trying to change that. the system to meet I'm your needs? I'm not trying to change the filibuster. I'm not there. I'm not in a position to change the filibuster. So I'm you're not, not you you, you haven't said anything about changing the filibuster. I'm not one of the sinners that one of the sinners. Have you said anything oh, about changing the filibuster? Let me finish. Let me finish. Because you won't I'm answer the question. To, I'm just trying I'm to get not, you to answer I'm a question. It, I have, I have, you You should be a politician because <laughs> you choose not to answer the question. Well, you won't give me a chance to answer the question. It's a yes or no question. Did you want the, the filibuster which changed? You want me, which question you want me to answer? Do you want to change the filibuster? I would like to see the filibuster gone. And, you and, and how is that different than what they're doing? And you express the same thing now. I, the difference is, yes, but how, okay, how does how do I get the how does what you all right? Go ahead, difference. go ahead, go ahead. Okay, what's different is I'm not one of the senators that get the vote on getting rid of the filibuster or not. So I have to live. I have to live with the results. Yeah, but you have the opportunity to petition your representative to represent you. You don't have to just live with it. You can make changes. My representatives. The two of the representatives that represent me in the Senate are people that are against the filibuster. Did you vote? And they would vote and they would vote to eliminate the filibuster. And I'm happy with that. Did you fact. did you vote? Yes, I did. Then you had a chance to have your voice heard. You just lost. <laughs> my voice. Did my you voice not? Was heard. Right. My voice was heard. Your voice was heard. Again, and you I lost. do not get a direct. See, like you mentioned before, there's direct input and there's indirect input. I don't get the I don't get the direct input in meaning I don't get the vote to get rid of the filibuster. I'm not a senator. I'm okay. not a city right. senator. So, so I don't so get here, the vote. Here's, I don't get the vote to here's, get rid of the here's where here, here's where I, I don't know where to move forward. Okay. You have an opportunity to vote for your representative. You lost. And then you say, I don't get a chance. That's the chance. Your chance was you voted, you lost. Yeah. And so the filibuster stays. That's it. End of story. The, okay. Where I disagree with you at okay. is I don't get to directly vote on that filibuster. Who gets the vote on that filibuster? But that's not the, the that's not the issue. You got a chance to vote. I gave my input. I didn't get. I that's it. Get a chance to vote on that filibuster. That's what a representative democracy input. is. I gave input, just like other people around the country gave input. Right now, now no matter what you say, on the bottom line is the fifty sitting senators get the vote right. whether or not to get rid of that filibuster. All right. And that's the way the system works. That's the way this system works. But that's democracy. That's you got a chance to vote. I got a chance to vote. Now, it wasn't. It wasn't that. Vote. It wasn't that five people who are um, aristocrats or landowners just decided that the filibuster was going to exist, and you didn't get a chance to say something about it. But you got eight. You got eight 
you got you got seven or eight senators that refuse to vote to get rid of the filibuster. That's okay. So That's what democracy five, is. It's not five aristocrats, but it's like seven senators right. who are who are allowing the filibuster to stay. It that's it's democracy. Joe it's Joe Manchin, it's Christian All Cinema, right. and it's five other uh five other Democrats that refuse to vote to get rid of the filibuster. Right. I mean it just means you don't get your way. Yeah. Because they have people that vote them in office and they yeah. represent those people. That's so cool. not much you can say. So that's it. Exactly. But you got a chance exactly. to you got I mean, a chance to voice I mean, your opinion. I made my, I gave my input when right. I voted for, when I voted for Tammy Duckworth and Dick Durbin here in Illinois. I gave my input when I voted those two guys in. All right. Okay. All right. So it's up to them now to vote whether or not to end the filibuster. Right. And you still have an opportunity to send them emails and messages and call them. Yeah. And let them know that you want that yeah. that filibuster. So yes, absolutely. Uh, so tomorrow, since okay. it's we've we finished off today, tomorrow we are going to uh, try to dive into uh, some specifics. Uh, the title of the show is Body Autonomy. Okay. Uh, today was supposed to be kind of a high level um, process discussion. But it, it kind of got down into the details. But that's okay. I mean, that's a part of co having conversations. Um, yeah. Anybody, you guys want to have a last comment before we split? Well, I just think um, we could argue about this all day long. But the, of course, the, uh, the key to the Demo <clears throat> excuse me, Democratic Republic or the way our system is set up, a representative, is that, you know, we get a chance to vote for our representatives you know he may win he or she may win they may lose and that's pretty much uh, where it drops you know but we just have to stay active we have to uh, hold them accountable the best we can and we have to just be hopeful that um, things get better you know everybody doesn't uh agree with uh on the same issues and that's where we are right now we've got hard lines dividing on specific issues all right. like this abortion issue all right anything leonard yeah i mean we have an ideal system of government where people get to vote for their representatives they get to give input and like leon said you can constantly send them emails you can constantly send them mails you can constantly give them input okay now, the thing is, do you get a representative that agree with you mostly or disagree with you mostly? Now we just have people that want to change the whole system so that they never have to compete in the public realm of ideas, that they get to always win no matter what. And it was, it was based off of the previous guy saying, the election was stolen from me. And it was proven over and over again in courts of law and everything else that it wasn't stolen. But he has said as much in the interview with Leslie Stahl. He's got to keep saying it so that when he comes to say it for real, people will believe him and act. And that's what has happened. All righty. So I appreciate everybody joining us this afternoon. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about body autonomy. You won't want to miss it. Have a great day. This episode of Altitude Adjustment. And thank you for listening. This podcast is streamed live on YouTube and Twitch.tv and is designed for listener interaction. Visit the website, the Lions Den stl.wixsite.com forward slash home to join the discussion. The audio version of Altitude Adjustment is available where you get your podcasts, including Stitcher.com, the iTunes Store, and the Google Play Music Store. Remember that the internet is powered by your likes, shares, and comments. So please like, share, and comment on this and other episodes of Altitude Adjustment because it matters. And as always, look out for the other guy because they may not be looking out for you.